right, so now that I've went into my BIOS and configured the uh, Intel VTX feature, basically just turned it on, um, I should be able to launch these virtual machines without any issue. The first one I'm going to get into is the Windows 10 Pro. So I'm just going to go over to the left side of my VMware Player uh, window here, and I'm just going to double click on the Windows 10 Pro to launch that virtual machine. Once the virtual machine comes up, it's going to emulate the same process I would go through if I was installing this uh, this operating system on a physical computer. So you notice that it, it gave me the option and said, "Okay, load the." Oops, let's see it from this. Press any key to to um, continue the installation process. So I had to do that. I don't think I did it in time, so it timed out. So let's go ahead and restart that. There we go. I'm going to have to click into the actual VM window to give the virtual machine controller your keyboard and mouse. I wasn't clicked in, so it didn't it didn't register my press any key. All right. But that window splash screen is always a good sign when you're doing a Windows installation. First thing it's going to do is going to start unpacking. Well, it's going to open up and launch those installation files that we gathered from the website and it's going to kick off the setup process first thing you're going to see when you get to that windows 10 setup is you're going to see this uh initial setup page is going to ask us what language we want to run this in the current time and currency format and the keyboard layout everything's set the us i'm going to keep it there but you can make adjustments if you need to and then hit next the Windows installation media is a, actually a dual purpose tool. You can use it for doing an installation of Windows, but you can also use it to repair operating system software issues. So if you notice down here in the corner, it says repair your computer. If I click on that link, it'll open up a, a set of tools you can use to troubleshoot and repair your OS files. We're doing a clean install, so we're going to just say install now. Here's prompting us for an activation key. Uh, this would again be if you purchased a copy of the operating system. We're doing this in trial mode, so we're going to say don't have a product key. So that'll move us forward. Um, the install files for Windows 10 also do something new. Instead of having multiple different installers for different editions of Windows, like they uh, used to do in the past. Now they've incorporated all of the different versions of Windows that you can use into one installation package. So we've got our home version here, our version for educational institutions, and our pro versions all on the same installer file. We want the pro without the end, the Windows 10 Pro. We'll select that one and then we'll hit next. Our end user license agreement. We just kind of go through that. If we don't accept it, we can't install it. So let's go ahead and check that off and then hit next. Um, this is an interesting part. Now, if we're doing a upgrade, a upgrade would be if we have an existing operating system or in this case, an existing version of Windows that is supported in an upgrade path, meaning that is not so old that Windows 10 can't be compatible with it. Uh, currently, the upgrade path for Windows 10 is Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. So if you have a Windows machine that's on any one of those operating systems, then it can do an upgrade to Windows 10. If it's older than Windows 7, then you then the upgrade is not uh, an option that you can use. The operating system is too old. And definitely, if it's not 
on the same version type. So for example, let's say I had a Windows 7 computer, but it was Windows 7 Home Edition. If I wanted to install Windows 10 Pro Edition, those two wouldn't work because the upgrade path for Home Edition would be Windows 10 Home. Um, I would need Windows 10, I would need Windows 7 Pro in order to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. Uh, benefit of the upgrade though is if your operating system is in the upgrade path for Windows 10, um, it makes the process go faster and it also keeps all your files and applications that are compatible with Windows 10 in place. We use that option a lot um, as admins when we want to keep all of our users information and uh, configurations set up the way they are so let's say someone's getting an upgrade from windows 7 to windows 10 they leave uh, work on friday we do the upgrade over the weekend they come in for work on monday and when they turn on their computer uh, outside of having a different splash screen everything kind of in a different taskbar like they'll have little different i a little different start button in the taskbar looks slightly different but other than that everything should be set up exactly the same as it was when they left work all of their shortcuts on their desktop will be the same their files will still be in place uh, it's pretty seamless so that's the benefit of the upgrade when you're not in the upgrade path though or when you just want to do a clean installation then we'll do custom so I just selected custom uh, custom will wipe the hard drive so if if you're working on a system that has data on it, make sure that you back that data up first, because when you just custom install, it's going to wipe and reformat the hard drive. So all that data is going to be taken out. We don't have any existing data on our virtual machine. You can notice it says uh, drive zero unallocated space, 60 gigabytes. That means unallocated means it's not being used currently. So that's our hard drive that we that we designated our virtual hard drive that we designated when we set up the VM. All of it's unallocated. So this is the space that we're now going to use to set up our virtual machines hard drive. We'll click on it to make sure it's selected and then you just hit new. Um, <clears throat> if you want to create a hard drive with multiple multiple uh, partitions, uh, so like a C drive and a D drive, Here's where you would split that up. You would you would use a not all of the storage capacity, but some of it. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to sit uh, hit apply and let it use all of that space to make my hard drive. It's still going to carve out a little bit of space for some um, operating system stuff. There's a there's a system reserved portion that they use and a system file that they use to hold the operating system files and the boot files. So it creates a couple of other partitions automatically for itself but the, you see the majority of the space is still set aside as primary this is where I'm actually going to put my operating system files on in a second it just got this it, right now it's just getting the space ready to extract those files onto it so I'll select that primary and hit next and now it's copying the files down getting ready to install them And this part can take a while, so I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it finishes. Don't touch it. Okay, so Windows 10 uh, finally finished unpacking its files. It did the rest of its installation. My, my, not, all of that stuff was automated, so didn't really need to click on anything. So after you get to the point that I was at, it'll it'll do its it'll finish doing its thing on its own. I rebooted and then it brought back up this Windows splash screen. I had to set up some files and now it's getting ready to load the initial desktop uh, for the operating system. So we're just waiting on that to occur. But I did want to want you to see at least some of that process. Again, most of it's automated from that point, but after it does the setup of the initial desktop, there'll be some steps that you have to go through to get it get it fully set up things like setting the uh, system time and thing, uh, other things of that nature. So we'll walk through that. All 
All right, so setup is done, and now need, uh, Windows needs some configuration information from us. So what region are we in? I'm going to leave it set to US. Again, that can be changed if necessary. Hit yes. All right, next keyboard layout, I'm gonna leave that set to US also. Here you can skip this part if you want, unless you wanna add a second keyboard layout. I'll skip that. For networking, um, if you want to set this part up ahead of time during the installation proce uh, process, you can. I typically do the networking portion after I finish my software installation because you don't really need it right away. So I'll just hit don't have internet and then I'll let me move past it. All right. These are some um, advanced features that are more geared towards home users I would say doing things like syncing your phone to uh, Windows 10 and adding some cloud um, connectivity I'm going to continue with the limited setup here's where we get to identify who's going to be using this computer I'm going to create an admin account so I'm going to say admin and give my admin a password. This will be the local administrator on the machine, but like I mentioned before, there has to be at least one account on the on the uh, machine that has administrative privileges. And then you're gonna give some uh, security questions. I'm just gonna opt, kinda opt out of these. These will be for your password reset. These are more so important if this is a standalone computer, but if you were to join this machine to a domain, which we'll play around with later on in the course, then this, this uh, no longer matters. Your password resets won't be done by individual user. Password resets will come to you, the system administrator, and then you'll reset their password for them. All these privacy features, I'm gonna turn them off. For Katana, we're going to say not now. And after those settings, then I get this high screen. The high screen means that I've given uh, Microsoft or Windows all of the information it needs to get started. It's going to build my user profile or the profile for the account that I just made. That takes a couple of minutes. And once it builds that user profile, then I'll get my actual desktop screen to work with this could take a couple minutes as it says on the screen so I'm going to pause again until that finishes all right so once that uh, processing completes You'll be presented with your Windows 10 desktop and the basic installation or basic functions of the operating system are now in place. It's a lot of the other work to do, but now at least you can turn on your virtual machine. You get an environment where you can actually work in and you're up and running. So that's it for Windows 10. Let's move on to our next operating system. We'll do the other client, another client install. Let's do Ubuntu client version.